we're going to add user interface to our large language models and generative AI. In particular, we're going to use Streamlit, which is a web application development framework that lets you do this completely in Python. So you don't have to use JavaScript and React and TypeScript and all the all these other fun things that I use the word fun loosely that lets you really customize it. Now you can make use of those technologies, but here we're going to look at doing a pure Python sort of solution. So here is the example that we're going to run from. The link to this code is in the description. I do assume that you are using OpenAI and that you have the key set up in here. We're going to go ahead and run that because that key comes in here and I am going to run through this complete example, show you how it works and discuss the code. This takes a moment so we will fast forward through this. So Streamlit is a Python library that lets you design these user interfaces that are designed to be web. There are other libraries that you can make use of. Flat, for example, that gives you a variety of different, so you can even deploy it potentially as a cell phone application or a just a standalone application as well. We're going to use a Streamlit because it's, it really integrates well with machine learning and some of the generative AI that we're making use of. I give you a couple of links here. There is Streamlit itself and then the documentation that goes along with Streamlit. They do have really pretty good documentation and they have an application gallery as well. So we're going to do a hello world in Streamlit. You can see it here and you notice I do have this command at the top. This is a Jupiter a magic, I believe they're called, with a double percent. This basically says that the code in this cell, when we run it, we're not going to actually execute it. Rather, we're going to run it, uh, generate it, write it, I guess I should say, to the local storage that we have attached to us. So in this case, it's the virtual machine that Google is setting up when we run Colab. Because for Langchain, for Streamlit, using Langchain, to work, we need it to run as a server, as an application server that you, that you will access through a browser. To run those through Colab, it takes a couple of extra steps that I'm going to talk about here. We have to use a tunnel. And if you send this to production and you want to do something real with Streamlit, you will deploy it onto some sort of a server where it's running constantly waiting for connections to come in. But just for testing and prototyping, like we'll do in this class, we will use Colab to run this. So when we run this, it's not going to actually execute that code. It's simply going to write it to app.py, which we will use in a moment. And this is an ultra simple Streamlit application. It's simply printing out hello world and that's it. Now when we run this, we're going to run it through a tunnel and the tunnel basically takes this locally running server and tunnels it out to something that is exposed to the internet. You're running behind a firewall here, these virtual machines. You can see and run your Jupyter notebook but you can't listen on server ports unless you route them out with some sort of a, some sort of a tunnel. Now you're going to need to know the IP address of your virtual machine. You can't go and just connect to this IP address. That's not what it's for. This is just a security sort of thing that the tunneling software makes use of just to verify that you are the one that is in control of this virtual machine. So we're going to copy that because we need it. This is essentially our password. And then we're going to run this command, which will run Streamlit in the background, so to speak. So it will run. And this, these commands that you see here, we're basically piping any output to this log file that we can take a look at later if stuff goes wrong. And this and, that's a Unix command that basically says to run it in the background. So when we run this, nothing is really going to happen because it just started it up and it's running in the background. If you have Google Colab Pro Plus, you could actually launch a terminal and 
go look at it and you would basically see that it is actually running if you do a PS in Linux to see all the processes that are running. We'll skip that for now because we don't really don't really need to do that and I'm not going to assume that you have Colab Pro. Now we're going to run this. This will actually start up the tunnel. Notice it and it does ask you this. You will type yes to let it go ahead and install its library. And no, I don't want to add that to LastPass. So now it is it is running, and you can see the 11 streets dress look. Uh, this this is just a virtual, temporary address. If you go and you hit this, it it won't do anything for you because by the time you see this, this server will no longer be running. Now it's asking you for a password. So when you hit this this tunnel, this is kind of like the front guard you paste that password that I told you to copy into there and you submit and it's running. Yay. We have a hello world application. So this shows that you are using this tunneling software able to actually run Java. I'm sorry. So this shows you that you are actually able to run Python applications from, from this, not Java. That was another lifetime ago. All right. So now we are going to go ahead and terminate that. What I like to do when we're going to switch to another whole server, like we're going to do here, is I like to terminate the notebook. So it's completely, not even a restart, but just a complete terminate. So now you have to run this first part again, where it installs everything for us to look at our second example. I'll fast forward through this again. So now let's run the second example here. We're going to do some streamlit input here. We are going to basically run a program that will be an interactive web application that lets you input expressions like one plus one, I don't know, and it will return two, and it'll display that all through the web. So I'm showing you how we do input in streamlit. You'll notice I have the evaluate expression. This allows only numbers and, and, and the appropriate parts of expressions. This is kind of a security feature just to make sure that we're not running anything that we should not run. And also just a user interface thing to tell you that you entered something completely invalid, perhaps. So this evaluates the expression and returns it to you. You can give your streamlit application a title and we're simply saying that it is evaluation expression eval uh, evaluator. ST is kind of the normal prefix that you import Streamlit as. You'll notice what we're doing here. This is really interesting the way and important to understand. You'll notice that we do expression equals this. What this is doing is twofold and this is critical to how Streamlit works. You're not creating sort of a control. You are creating control. You're, you're placing the text box onto there, but you're also retrieving the input to it at the same time. So what you've got to understand is the minimum number of times that this code is going to be ran through when you launch the application is twice. The first time you're coming through, it is going to just place the item on top of it. And this is why we have this code here that only evaluates the expression if something was returned. Because the first time through this code, you're just setting up the page. And then the second time through, something will actually come back and that's going to be the value that you input into there. And then we're going to actually write the result. So you're not going to see this result here or any of that until the second time that you come through. If you wanted to see result here, but just be blank, you'd need to move that outside of it and then update it if something had actually come through. So that's an important aspect of how Streamlit actually works here. So let's go ahead and run this so that it gets written to disk. We're going to get our IP address, which is also the password. Copy that because we're going to need it. Make sure you copy in the whole thing. Then we're going to run the second part here that launches it in the background. Don't expect any output from it. And then we establish the pipe so that we're or the tunnel that we're able to get to it. You do have to say yes to this and it's running and you have this weird temporary URL. So we're going to run that. 
it takes you to the tunnel welcome page and you're going to enter your password IP address. That should let you in. And now we've got the expression evaluator. So the first time through that code, notice it doesn't display the result or anything. We're just trying to put something in here. 3 plus 2. And we'll just press enter. And now it runs it a second time. It leaves all of this on here and then it actually rebuilds it because it's keeping no state from the time before. We'll see how to introduce state later. But now it says result is 5. So there you have it. Simple Streamlet application and showing you how to run it in Colab and expose it to the internet so that you can test it out. We'll do much, much more with this. This is just the, this is just the beginning. So thank you for watching this video and please subscribe if this was useful to you so you don't miss out on any of the other things. And what is it they say? Smash the like button if this was useful to you. Thank you so much.